Hey everyone, it's Sunday, so that means it's story time. So uh, today is a very special story time. As you can see, I'm kind of in a, a little bit of a different area. I'm still in our classroom, but I am next to our frog factory. What is a frog factory, you ask? Well, this is where we raise up all of our frogs. See, today I met an awesome little girl and little boy named Jameson and Liberty. And they told me about how they found some tadpoles in a pond and they were gonna help raise them up until they become frogs and can release them. So they wanted to know a little bit more about how a frog's life cycle works. Well, I have this awesome poster on the wall. There it is. Boom, right there. Reverse on the camera, it's always fun. So, frogs lay eggs. Those eggs eventually hatch and out of them comes a tadpole. So that's the little dot you see with a tail and they wiggle around. And different tadpoles eat different things, but most of them are gonna eat things like algae or little tiny things floating in the water. Eventually, those tadpoles grow back legs. And that means they're getting ready to turn into a froglet. And depending on the frog species, it could be weeks or it could be months, they develop all of their legs. And then they become a little froglet that has the shape of a frog, but still has a tiny little tail. And at that point, they absorb the tail up into their body, and then they become a frog, and they go up on land and live near water. And toads go through the same thing. Newts and salamanders do the same thing. It's an amphibian thing. They lay eggs, eggs hatch the tadpoles, tadpoles develop legs, become a froglet, toadlet, or mini salamander, and then boom, you, you, have, uh, you have your little guys. It's a little bit different depending on which species though. Some frogs have uh, live babies. Uh, if you're the Suriname toad, uh, the Peepa Peepa, you keep your eggs in your back and they look like a bunch of little pimples and then they hatch out of them. Amphibians have all kinds of cool traits. Some of them skip over tadpole stages completely and they're just born like as is, right when they catch out of the egg. It all depends on what we're looking at. But for today, we're gonna to look at one of my favorite frogs ever. We're going to look at a Vietnamese mossy frog. And the reason I'm doing this is not only because it's my favorite frog, uh, but I also have some tadpoles. So, come here buddy. Here's a mossy frog. Look at that catch. That's what happens when you work with amphibians for like 20 years, is uh, you learn how to catch them when they make their way up and over. Okay, bud, there we go. So, this is a mossy frog, aptly named, because he looks like a clump of moss. That's how they get their name, that's how they keep their camouflage. This is cryptic camouflage. This means they blend in with their surroundings. So, these guys are found uh, in Vietnam and China, and they like to live at really high elevations, like upwards of uh, 2,300 meters. And up there, there's lots of caves. It's really, really deep, dense rainforest. So these guys live near edges of water and swamps and waterfalls, but they like to live in the rocks. They have really, really big toe pads that you can see there, which means they can cling on to just about anything. Males actually have a little bit of a thicker toe pad on the inside of their toes. That's how we can tell they're a boy. So their main defense mechanism is hiding and looking like a clump of moss. Uh, they're very hard to find because they look like the rainforest, but also their call can go outwards of 10 to 13 feet throughout their entire surroundings. So it's hard to really like locate like where they were at. And then when they get really scared, if they end up getting picked up or whatever, they'll curl up into a ball. Oh, he didn't do it. It's okay, buddy. They'll sometimes curl up like that to just look like a ball of moss and then he doesn't really move at all. And then when I flip him upright, he starts moving his legs and everything again. So these are a really, really cool frog. Um, they get about three to three and a half inches. Uh, the girls get bigger. They can sometimes get the four inches. Um, their pattern runs right through their eye. You can see there's lots of different shades of green in his eye to help with that camouflage. They have a really, really fun little peeping type call. It's really hard to describe and I can't mimic it, so I'm not gonna try, but you should look it up and see what their call is like. Um, these guys are getting kind of popular in a pet trade. Um, they're not an endangered animal or anything like that, but just like with any amphibian, we have to worry about them because of uh, climate change and because of um, people illegally taking them out of the wild, um, as well as like urbanization and stuff like that. But we're breeding them here in captivity along with lots of other people. Um, so that way we can make sure that these species survive no matter what happens, which is one of the reasons we breed animals here at Proust is we wanna make sure that they survive. So I'm gonna show you the couple tadpoles that we have. Now they'll lay eggs in usually two to three weeks after the eggs are laid. They hatch out 
and you get a tadpole. Now this one's really big. They start out much smaller than that, but they look almost like a little beta fish in a way. And you can't see it on camera, but they do have two tiny little eyes that are developing on there. But again, with uh, the camera, it's, I don't have a uh, good ability to do this. But I do have a second tadpole that is starting to develop his legs and also starting to develop a little bit of pattern on top. So you can kind of see his little legs there. Can't really tilt the cup too much, but there they are. Right now they look like gills sticking off his face like an axe lava, but there's his little legs kicking. It takes upwards of four to six months for these tadpoles to fully develop into froglets. So it takes a very, very long time compared to a lot of other species, but it's definitely worth the wait. So I have my adult, I have my babies, and they can sit right there for now before I put them back into their proper enclosures. But they'll sit there while I read our story this week, which is Little Miss Bossy by Roger... Uh, I can't read what his name says. Hangreaves. Is that what it says? Or Hargreaves. I think it says Hargreaves. I just remember these books when I was little, and I always had stickers of these, but I never knew who came up with them or who wrote them, but I figured this would be a fun one to read, so here we go. On Monday, Little Miss Bossy went for a walk. She met Mr. Nosy. Where are you going, he asked. Mind your own business, she retorted. On Tuesday, she met Mr. No Nosy. He was singing, noisily, of course. Be quiet, she told him. On Wednesday, she met Mr. Happy. He was smiling, as usual. Take that silly smile off your face, she said. As you can imagine, Little Miss Bossy wasn't very popular, to say the least. Now, little did Miss Bossy realize, but somebody had seen her bossing Mr. Nosy around. At that same somebody and had seen her bossing Mr. Nosy around. And that self same somebody had seen her bossing Mr. Happy around. The wizard, whose name, incidentally, was Wilfred, went home thinking, something really ought to be done about little Miss Bossy, he thought to himself as he walked along. When he arrived at home, he went straight to his library and took down a large red book from a bookshelf. It was rather dusty as it hadn't been read in quite some time. Let's see now, he said to himself as he settled into an armchair. He turned to page 304 and at the top of the page it said, How to Stop People from Being Bossy. Wilfred the Wizard read the page very carefully, shut the book, put it back on the bookshelf and grinned. A particularly wizardy sort of grin. The day after, which was Thursday, Little Miss Bossy met somebody who was fast asleep. As usual, Mr. Lazy. Wake up, she said bossily and prodded him in the tummy. Ouch, protested Mr. Lazy. But behind Little Miss Bossy, Wilfred the Wizard, who had been following her, said something too, under his breath. A wizardy word he had learned from page 304. And do you know what happened? Suddenly, as if by magic, which is true, there appeared on Little Miss Bossy's feet a pair of boots. One minute they weren't there, the next minute they were. Little Miss Bossy looked down in alarm. There were magic boots, and being magic boots, they could speak to each other. Hello, left, said the right boot. Hello, right, said the left boot. Ready when you are, said right. Right, said left, and off they went. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Faster and faster, marching poor Little Miss Bossy along. Little Miss Bossy couldn't do a thing about it. Mr. Lazy was very amused. Well done, Wilfred, he chuckled. Wilfred winked a wizardy wink. Those boots marched Little Miss Bossy for five miles. She was exhausted. Ready, left, said the right boot. Ready, replied left. Add in, said right. Shun, said left. And they came to a halt. Little Miss Bossy was quite out of breath. She tried to take off her boots, but it was impossible. Along came Wilfred. Those, said Wilfred, pointing to boots, are only for people who are too bossy. Make them go away at once, cried Little Miss Bossy, stamping her foot. Well, at least she tried to stamp her foot, but the boot wouldn't. We're out of stamps, chuckled right, left giggled. 
You will do as I say, shouted Little Miss Bossy. Ready when you are, said right. Right away, replied left. March. And they set off again. Left, right, left, right, left, right, for ten miles. And then they stopped again, and along came Wilfred. Make these stupid boots go away, shouted Little Miss Bossy. Only if you say the magic word, replied Wilford. Little Miss Bossy thought, and thought, and thought again. Please, she said. That's better, smiled Wilford. And he said the wizardy word again under his breath from page 304. These boots disappeared as if by magic. Now then, said Wilford sternly, wagging his finger, stop being bossy or you know what will happen. Little Miss Bossy nodded miserably. Very well, smiled Wilfred and went. And do you know something? From then on, Little Miss Bossy was a changed person. Not bossy at all. And you know why, don't you? You know what she's so afraid of? Bossy boots. So, this is a pretty good book for some of you who sometimes get a little bit of an attitude with your parents and start trying to boss them around, forgetting that they're the adult, and most of the time, I'll say most of the time, adults know what's best. Your parents especially know what's best for you. So if they say something like, we need you to stop yelling and screaming, you should probably do it. If they tell you, you should probably eat everything on your dinner plate and eat it faster in a timely manner, you should probably do it. You can't be Little Miss Bossy and tell your parents, no, I don't want to, no, I'm not going to do that and make excuses because they're trying to do what's best for you. So. Luckily, in the animal kingdom, these little tadpoles can't be bossy towards the adults because they're going to raise themselves. Imagine having to do that. That would be like Little Miss Bossy's boots taking you away, and then you have to fend for yourself. And we don't want that. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the book. I hope you enjoyed learning about mossy frogs and tadpoles and to Liberty and Jameson. I hope you guys learned a lot more about tadpoles today, and if you want to know more, just have your dad contact me. He knows how to get a hold of me. So, have a good night, everybody.